Good morning, everybody. My topic for today is seeking perfection and how apt it could be. But let me ponder on this very first slide. You may have noticed that I've placed sun way up front. We must all remember that we are a son or a daughter to, to our parents, a husband or a wife to our spouse, a father or a mother to our children. I have a son and a teacher, which I put on the same line because we must give to the future. And unless we teach, we are not giving anything to the future. So therefore, I prefer to call myself a professor rather than a doctor. Gratitude is the foremost virtue. And I must thank people who are often taken for granted. First and foremost is my wife, Anna Paula. She has not only helped me with this presentation, but also with whatever I do, even as a neurosurgeon, to become perfect. I should also like to mention a number of friends, but Nadim Rice in particular, but I'd be failing in my duty if I did not mention two of my teachers, of course, all of them matter from school, from college, but two of my teachers who really helped me to be where I am, Professor Das and Professor Rout. They were heads of respective national institutes of the country. Perfection. Let's try and look at it very simply. It also means completeness. You try and do a job and do it well done. That's all that is required. For a small child, when he learns his first maths, like for example, two plus two is four, and he does that time over and time over again, precisely the same answer, he is perfect at that. So maturity. What is flawlessness? Not to make mistakes. That's what neurosurgery is all about anyway. Supreme excellence. And when you have these under your belt, you're often considered saintly. So they all have something in common. So let's start with simple things. If you can do the simple things, there's a good chance that you'll be able to do the more complicated things. And when you come across the more complicated challenging things, you break them up. They're like algorithms for the computer. They're all broken up into small, small bits. So you achieve the small bits and then you will be able to be, achieve the bigger things. So how do we do the impossible? It's not just to try. You must try to do your very best in the true sense of the word and you will succeed provided you have no agenda. And we shall see that in the next few minutes. There are many professions that demand perfection. The practice of medicine is one such. And neurosurgery is probably at its top. Let me share with you some true life experiences to indicate what we do on a daily basis. This is a young reg a registrar's mother who was suffering from a massive pituitary adenoma and she lost her vision all of a sudden. I got a frantic call on a Sunday morning when I was at a busy CME where I was in fact chairing the session and I had to leave because the registrar was frantic saying my mother has lost vision. She was very diabetic as well. She had sugars to be controlled. She was obese. So it was not easy for us to just take the patient and immediately operate. So we had to really prime this patient, which took a couple of days. It's no point trying to save vision and lose life. So I operated her in a couple of days and here she is with vision restored. The last I heard was she was going with her daughter for a movie. So these are the things that you hear from our patients in neurosurgery. Let's look at another case, a basilar tip aneurysm where I was called in to operate because this patient bled in the brain and my student who had gone to Baroda requested me to come. So I flew, I had to fly immediately, which means I had to take the evening flight and operated through the night. I had to take my micro instruments and this surgery is difficult even in our own surrounding at the KM hospital, but I had to do this in an alien surrounding. I didn't know the sister. So, so many parameters that were not within my control, but yet I planned this surgery in my mind, took the clips that I needed for the surgery, did the job. In fact, I used four clips for the surgery and came back the next morning to continue duty at the KM hospital. The patient did well. Let's look at the other case now. This is 
a case I operated 12 years ago. She has a huge dominant, dominant means on the left side, on the dominant hemisphere of the brain, a motor strip that's around the motor area of the brain, a large arteriovenous malformation. Various consultants had said that this was an inoperable case. But I could see this girl, she was living in my building for a while, deteriorated in, a, in front of my eyes. She started having weakness on one side of the body. And then she started developing seizures, multiple seizures. In fact, she had four or five seizures every day. By the time she came up for surgery, or uh, she, she was ready for surgery because the relatives are very, very scared. She was practically bedridden. I started the surgery at five in the evening after my day's work at KM Hospital. And I finished at 5 a.m. the next morning. It took me 12 hours to get rid of this huge ball of blood in vessels. And after I did the surgery, I settled the patient in the ICU, spoke to the relatives, the parents of the kid, and said that everything will be fine. And went to play a cricket match, in fact, a time shield which I'd committed to play, and we could save his life. years old and I have a lump in my throat. How do we do what we do? So there are multiple steps involved. The first is proper learning and education. This is where most of us are. Being a teacher, I still continue to learn because I teach people and they ask me the most difficult questions to answer. So you, most students are at this stage, but remember learning and education must be vast. You must gain immense knowledge, like the base of the pyramid. This is your foundation. Then mentorship and guidance. It's extremely important to have a good mentor. He mustn't be the one who says you can't do this or you won't do this. He should be able to guide you through. And this is the person or these are the people who are going to give you the wisdom and the skill, which will develop on the education that you've had. At, at home, you have a similar person as well. And she's your, uh, she's your wife. So most men call that nagging. Nevertheless, practice makes you perfect. This is what was highlighted many years ago. But now it is known that that is not exactly what it is. There is more to it than just that. Yes, practice makes you perfect when probables are more standard and the conditions are stable. For example, like tennis as a sport would be probably better off as you keep seeing Roger Federer practice his backhand, for example. But it's not the same in medicine. In fact, it's not at all. And same with cricket, in fact. Let's look at the next step. You have something called cross training. So for an athlete, a cricketer might play a bit of football, so he develops other skills. Whereas for a surgeon like me, I play the piano or I play cricket or I think around with the car or do carpentry. So it de develops other skills in your ever expanding brain cells. They expand by networking. They keep on networking. It's like what so many other softwares do for us that we network and then we expand. But what is also important is you must be analytical and you must observe. And these skills develop only if you are honest. If you are not honest, I'm sorry, you will go the wrong path. So this is what I used to do on the cricket field. I played veterans cricket for India early this year. And these are some of my exploits when I'm not in the operating room. Probably the most important, but would come at the end is the mind. mind. How do you trigger? How do you manage to have the attitude a person needs to become perfect? You need the courage, you need the discipline, you need the determination, you need the respect, you need temperament, commitment, and focus. Let me give you a simple example of respect. If I'm playing a match, I'm playing a cricket match, and I don't respect the bowler, or I don't respect the ball, and I try to hit a ball which is meant to really actually get me out, I should defend it, I will lose my wicket. I won't be able to do what I need to do, and I will, won't be batting perfectly. So this is a small example and everything can be dissected in the same manner. Let's look at the last point, which is also extremely important, is the spirit. It is the belief that you carry. 
it's not the spirit that you use or that you that you consume in the bar and the restaurants this spirit makes you the spiritual person that you are that allows you to reach for most people beyond the realms of what you see in day to day life this is just a slide i put for people who don't understand what the mind is remember that it is all powerful and it depends on how you want to use it so therefore i chose neurosurgery a field that merits perfection and for me to forgive is humane and to err is inhuman we indians hail from a country where generations of people for performed with perfection and no agenda simply look at ajanta and elora look at those rock ca uh, caves or look at the paintings they're perfect and they continue to be done by generations 3000 years ago this is neurosurgery today this is a young lady who worked with me as a secretary for four years she's married and got a kid she underwent two surgeries on either side of the head where we had to open into the brain and clip multiple aneurysms so this is just to tell you what neurosurgery is today and how one can be perfect in day to day life as well thank you stay safe and stay healthy